1793, Lord McCartney, a British diplomat, led an embassy to Beijing to establish diplomatic relations with the Chinese emperor. When he arrived, he was shocked to find out that the emperor considered uh, him to be a supplicant and uh, Great Britain to be a vassal of the Chinese Empire. Um, McCartney arrived with a bunch of ingenious gifts like clocks and weapons and things uh, that were products of British industry that the Chinese didn't have. Uh, the Chinese treated them more or less as ingenious toys and packed them away. McCartney left empty-handed without ever having gotten diplomatic uh, relations established between himself or his country and China. It was a fruitless expedition. Uh, about 50 years later, a war broke out, uh, the Opium War. There was several, actually. Um, the British were attempting to uh, jimmy open Chinese, uh, the Chinese economy for trade using opium as a medium of trade that they could uh, get in return China's tea and silk and things that the Europeans had gotten quite addicted to. Well, when the British sailors first arrived and sailed towards several Chinese forts up Chinese rivers, the Chinese civilians looked at the British ships with the weird-looking foreigners with their ridiculous clothes on board and laughed. A lot of British soldiers noted that Chinese civilians tended to fall to the ground they were laughing so hard at the absurd appearance of the British. Uh, they noted that a lot of Chinese people went, ah, ha, 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 you're dead, you dumb, stupid Europeans, you've come here to fight us, are you kidding? This is China, this is the Celestial Empire, we defeat everybody that we have ever fought. We defeat them or we absorb them, it's very simple. You think from your puny little island you're going to do anything to us? Well, the British pretty much crushed the uh, Chinese army and navy effortlessly during that war. It's a very one-sided war, and they forced opium down the throats of the Chinese. Finally, around about 1900, a revolt broke out called the Boxer Rebellion, in which uh, the Chinese pretty much fed up with uh, European and um, North American interference in their country's sovereignty rebelled en masse, more or less as a large mob, um, stormed the headquarters of uh, the European garrisons and trading missions and uh, missionary organizations. Um, and uh, the revolt, as they called it, uh, how you could call it as a, call it a revolt, uh, the Boxer Rising, the Boxer Rebellion, was put down bloodily. Um, European soldiers then uh, stormed the Imperial Palace and looted it. Lo and behold, they found the cannons that Lord McCartney had left with the Chinese Emperor over a hundred years ago, sitting in a storage room where they had been put soon after McCartney departed. Now, the Chinese were up against Europe, modern Europe, with modern weapons. Europe had modern weapons, had modern ships, had a very uh, carefully worked out philosophy for ruling empires. The British were particularly good at it, but a lot of other European powers had large overseas empires. They were also industrialized. They were growing fast in strength and prosperity. The Chinese simply refused to acknowledge that. Were the Chinese stupid? I would say that the Chinese were most certainly not stupid. They knew what guns were, they knew what gold was, they knew what industrial machinery was capable of doing. But nothing in their entire two, three thousand year history had prepared them for what they now faced a power that was capable of overwhelming them, and a power that they were only vaguely aware of. This simply couldn't be happening. Like the rest of us, they could only judge the present by what they saw around them and the past. 
The arrival of the Europeans was something that they simply were not prepared for and could not have been prepared for. It was that new. The Europeans had done the same thing in uh, what is now Latin America when they conquered the uh, Inca and Aztec empires. These two empires could easily have actually fought off the Spanish. They didn't. Uh, again, because they were simply there was nothing in their entire history that had even remotely prepared them for this possibility. But according to some people, this would be proof that the Chinese were actually dumb, that they had low IQs, that they couldn't figure anything out. The obvious uh, fact of the matter was they were facing a superior enemy that they'd better prepare themselves for. But they refused to do it. They laughed at the Europeans until it was far too late. I wonder what the scientific racialists would say if they were to study that period in Asian history. They seem to take uh, pleasure in gathering modern statistics taken only in the past 40 years as proof to make gross generalizations on people of a certain race, why don't they take their, the same data in the 19th century and what sort of conclusions are they going to draw from that? Thank you.